Good afternoon. My name is Carlos Mena. I am an interventional cardiologist, associate professor of medicine at Yale University, Yale New Haven Hospital, where I am also the director of vascular medicine as well as their cardiac catheterization laboratories. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the impact DCV clinical program uh, during this NCVH digital educational series. Of note, I want to extend my appreciation to Dr. Craig Walker for inviting me to participate in this activity. Um, the first uh, would be my conflict of interest. I am a consultant for uh, Medtronic, as well as Cook, as well as Cardinal Health, as well as a Optum Labs. Um, the impact DCV uh, trial has been uh, quite a story and uh, we all have participated on it in many different fashions, different ways. And I'm gonna walk you through it, my experiences as well as others as it relates to this. The Impact Admiral DCV Clinical uh, Program is a robust adjudicated series that encompasses more than 1500 patients globally. Um, this specific data is uh, related to this SFA and we're gonna walk about or walk around the randomized control clinical trials and as a few others. The randomized clinical trials, as well as the approval studies that led to the um, approval of these devices in each geography are listed here. We have the IMPACT SFA, which was a randomized controlled clinical trial done both in Europe and the United States, in which there was two subsets, a gender subset, as well as a diabetic subset. There is an IMPACT series uh, done in Japan, which was also a randomized controlled clinical trial. And we recently heard uh, the completion of similar series in China. There are also real world studies, which is known as the IMPA global study in which there are pre-specified image cohorts, including the lone lesion, ISR and CTO. And there are some regional subsets. There is a Belgian one as well as an Asian one. So I am gonna walk you through this and hopefully we'll be able uh, to get to this. The drug-coated balloons definitely uh, came, I mean, a big difference in terms of the landscape of patients with uh, PAD. Clearly, as you will see during this data, there is a superior efficacy uh, compared to angioplasty. Uh, and that's basically what led uh, to their approval ultimately in the US. Uh, the DCV from Medtronic specifically has demonstrated best in class in terms of safety and efficacy based upon the results in one, two, and three years. Long-term randomized data for commercial available DCV are limited and Medtronic has a step up being able to deliver this data. Now, the specific device uh, needs to be understood and recognized. Uh, the platform is the Admiral Balloon Angioplasty that comes in diameters between four and seven with lens from 40 to 150 millimeters. The medication uses paclitaxel uh, with a concentration of 3.5 micrograms per millimeter square. The excipient is urea. And the process is basically done in a reliable way by Medtronic manufacturing. This is the basics of it. In terms of manufacturing, the balloon coated ma matrix uh, is done in a semi-inflated uh, state and then wrapped. Uh, during the transition, the major uh, tra during transit to the lesion, the majority of the matrix protected within the scaffolds of the balloon. There's no established limitation on transit time to the target uh, lesion. The DCB matrix coding is based on paclitaxel and urea. The inflation, uh, basically, the ma matrix contacts the, uh, the blood as well as the blood vessel, and this is how the medication gets transferred, and it gets transferred from the intima to the adventitia where it exhibits its anti-proliferate effects. Um, you know, one of the key here is that it provides a significant uh, amount of anti-proliferate medication over time, as you can see here. Urea is an actual curing molecule, which basically hydrates during contact with blood and facilitates drug transfer, and we know uh, a lot about paclitaxel. In terms of the trial, so the first trial, basically, um, you have an impact SFA one and two. The original one was done in the European Union. The US one obviously was done here in the United States. 
So it was a, a prospective two-phase multi-center clinical trial done in Europe and the United States, randomized two to one single-blinded subjects, sponsor trial management, basically. There was a rigorous and unbiased. There was an independent and blinded uh, ultrasound core lab, as well as an angiographic core lab and a CEC committee. Independent data safety monitoring board, and there was an external monitoring with 100% source data verification. Durability of outcomes, subjects were followed for about five years, and there has been several publications of the outcomes. This is the list of all the different sites that have been part of these specific trials. And uh, the primary endpoints and inclusion criteria have been uh, discussed in large and many different uh, meetings, but I just wanna highlight a few things. The efficacy is 12 month primary patency, which is defined as freedom from clinically driven TLR and duper ultrasound derived stenosis as defined by a peak systolic velocity ratio less than 2.4. Safety defined as freedom from 30 day device procedural death, 12 month amputation, 12 month clinically driven TL uh, TVR. The key inclusion criteria, including Claudication, uh, Rutherford 2, 3, and 4, is particularly in the SFA and popliteal location, and the lesion length uh, was less than 10 centimeters in the CTOs and in non-occluded, in non-CTO between 4 and 18 centimeters. Uh, we talk about this in terms of primary endpoints, uh, both efficacy and safety, and you can see how at the follow-up, there was a blind, a duplex, and a geographic core lab adjudication through three year of follow-up visits. And there was a blinded CEC adjudication, major adverse events through five years. This is the baseline clinical characteristics, as you can see between the drug coated balloon and the plain balloon angioplasty, there was no statistically significant difference, nor there was in terms of the initial presentation defined as Rutherford classification. Baseline and geographic lesions, they seem similar in both groups in terms of lesion length, total occlusion, the diameter, as well as the diameter of stenosis. Notice how many of the lesions have significant amount of calcification, uh, or at least some degree of calcification. Severe calcification was relatively low. Procedural characteristics, you know, in the drug coated balloon, there was a predilation uh, there was a statistically significant difference between the DCV and the plain balloon angioplasty. And the rate of provisional stenting uh, was significant, was not a statistically significant difference between the two groups. Outcomes, as you can see here in the red DCV and the blue plain balloon angioplasty, you can see here at three years, there is a significant difference uh, in terms of uh, patency in between the DCV group and the plain balloon angioplasty favoring drug coated balloon. Four year follow-up assessment, uh, clinically driven TLR <clears throat> was adjudicated by independent CEC, blinded to the assigned treatment based on any reintervention at the target lesion due to symptoms of drop of ABI more than 20%, 20% correct, or more than 0.15 when compared to post-procedural baseline ABI. All this was conducted by a telephone Interview, here I can highlight the MAEs as well as the restenosis and how we tracked it. At four years, you can see that the freedom for clinically driven TLR continues to be statistically significant favoring drug coated balloon metronic versus angioplasty. Now, independent predictors of uh, clinically driven uh, TLR in all intention to treat patients using Cox reg uh, regression multivariate analysis, you can see all the different things, gender, uh, the lesion length, the degree of calcification, but also highlighted the DCV versus plain balloon angioplasty, clearly highlighting the importance of the medication in this specific cohort of patients. At four years, you can see the efficacy uh, between the two groups. Days to first clinically driven TLR favor um, the drug coated balloon versus the angioplasty. All TLR was not a statistically significant difference. Safety outcomes through three years, you can see that there is nothing statistically significant. If anything, the issue of major adverse events and all cause death uh, did not appear to be different in both groups. So in summary, only independently adjudicated randomized pupil trial uh, that has demonstrated um, the superior of drug coated balloon versus plain balloon angioplasty through four years, and now probably there's data five years, 
is this is the impact SFA trial. Highly statistically significant primary patency benefit this specific device. Favorable clinically driven TLR uh, in the ACPA group over inflammable balloon angioplasty over four years. There is a significant record of safety with this specific device. And this data stress the importance of long-term follow-up, which is a key as we go forward. With that, I finish. I thank you very much for your attention and uh, have a good day.